Hi, my name is Sheetal Kamoju, and today I'm going to be talking about hyperbolic geometry through crochet. So a little bit about me before we get started. Um, I'm a senior in chemical engineering at Penn State, uh, set to graduate this May. Um, one of my hobbies are crocheting. Uh, it's kind of like knitting, but instead of having two needles, it's just one needle with a hook on the end to pull the yarn through and make stitches. Um, and I've always loved math, um, whether it was calculus or Euclidean geometry. So exploring hyperbolic geometry for the first time has been uh, insightful and educational at the same time. So hyperbolic geometry is a type of non-Euclidean geometry and is also the geometry of a constant negative curvature. And curvature is the amount a geometric object deviates from a flat plane. In the top left-hand corner, we have a soccer ball. Um, which takes the shape of a sphere, so therefore it exhibits positive curvature. Surfaces with a pentagon hole like the soccer ball show that the surface covers less area than the plane because it cur curves inward, um, creating a closed surface. In nature, positive curvature can be um, seen in any object that has circular symmetry, so that could be like an orange, um, a watermelon, or even a globe. And in the top right hand corner, we have a representation of zero curvature. So here um, we see that the surface covers the same area as the plane because it's flat, just like the plane. And this can be seen in nature through honeycombs. And on the bottom, we have a heptagon hole that has seven sides. So this approximates a hyperbolic plane um, exhibiting constant negative curvature. So here the surface covers more area than the plane and can extend indefinitely. So some examples of negative curvature in nature can be seen in um, leaves of uh, kale or lettuce or even some corals. So the best way we found to model our um, physical hyperbolic planes were to crochet them. And I have a model here with me, which is the same as the one on the screen. So um, this is our hyperbolic plane, our crocheted hyperbolic plane. So the way we drew our um, straight lines, I guess, is to fold our crocheted model to create the straight line, like so. And we see that it looks straight. So I stitched um, this blue yarn across this line here. And when I revert it back to its original shape, we see that it starts to curve a little bit. Um, so um, now we're gonna move on to what is considered straight on a hyperbolic plane. So there are two types of divergences. There's asymptotic and non-intersecting lines that diverge in two different directions. So we're gonna start off with the asymptotic, which is here. So if I were to extend this part of the um, curve further and further, um, we would see that it would get closer and closer together, but it would never intersect. And if we were to extend this end of it, we would see that it would get farther and farther apart. So the other type of divergence is the non-intersecting lines that diverge in two directions. So here we see that at the two ends here and here, um, they extend, if they were to extend, they would go farther and farther apart, um, both here and here, but they would get closer in the middle. Now we're gonna move on to parallel lines on the Euclidean plane. So if I were to draw a straight line um, and draw a point that's not on that line, I would only be able to draw one line that's parallel to our original line M um, that would be parallel. And that's basically the parallel postulate on the Euclidean plane. So parallel lines on a sphere are a little different. So if we're, we're gonna assume that the blue great circle is our original circle and our point is right here. So in this example, we have two, um, two great black circles. And, but in theory, we could have an infinite number of circles that go through this point here, um, but they would never be parallel to the a great blue circle because they would be intersecting with the blue great circle. So now we're gonna go on to parallel lines on the hyperbolic plane. And I have another crocheted model to show you guys. So here we have our blue line here that would be considered our original line. 
um, with our blue point here. They're about the same color. So again, in theory, I can have an infinite number of lines here, but since I'm not able to draw an infinite number of lines, I have three lines kind of showing. So these three lines kind of show that um, they're parallel to these lines. So technically, um, in theory, an infinite number of lines would still be parallel to this line going through this point. And that's the parallel postulate for the hyperbolic plane. So now we're gonna go on to different representations for the uh, parallel postulate. So these would be great if we weren't, um, if we didn't have a physical model. So on, on the left, we have a Poincaré model, which basically shows the parallel postulate in a circle. So to get the upper half plane model, I would take my boundary circle here and kind of just cut it off and stretch it into a straight line. So this straight line here would be our boundary circle. And this um, semicircle would be our original line and um, these other circles would be our lines that we drew that are parallel to the original line. So now we're gonna move on to uh, triangles in Euclidean geometry. So here we have three straight lines um, all connected to make a triangle. And if I were to take the sum of all three of these angles, they would be equal to 180 degrees. Now we're going to move on to spherical triangles, which are a little different. So here the lines are convex, meaning that they're curved outward, and the two black grade circles intersect the blue grade circle at right angles. So the sum of these angles right here would be 180 degrees, but this angle right here would be less than um, 180 degrees. So the sum of all three angles would be greater than 180, but less than 360. So now we're gonna move on to triangles on the hyperbolic plane. And I have another model here. So here is my other model. And so here the lines are concave, meaning that they're curved inward. So the sum of the angles are gonna be actually closer to zero on this model here because um, they're converging to the same point. So therefore this angle would be very small. But if I were to take the sum of all three angles, it would be definitely less than 180. And now we have another Poincaré and upper half plane model. Um, so again, if I were to cut this boundary circle and stretch it into a straight line, I would have the upper half plane model and um, the semicircles that are the, the lengths of each um, side of the triangle would intersect the boundary circle at right angles. So here, 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 here would all be at right angles. Um, so we also explored other um, polygons uh, and we found that, for example, re rectangles, um, we found that they didn't exist on the hyperbolic plane. So I have the same model here. And we can see that these three angles here are at right angles, but this fourth angle here, um, it kind of it kind of shows an asymptotic curve. So this line would be less than um, 90 degrees. So if I were to take the sum of all four of these angles, it would definitely be less than 360, which, which wouldn't be count, counted as a rectangle. So finally, I would like to thank my advisor, um, Dr. Samantha Pesmenti, and the author of Crocheting Adventures with Hyperbolic Planes, Dinah Taimina, um, for guiding me in learning more about hyperbolic crochet. Thank you.